back during that three month gap? Marston did. He he came back just long enough to kind of explain that they're well, they're a little. They honestly were wondering where your friend the to, um the Taboxi went. It they they honestly don't know. Um, I don't know if you would have let them know that that's still missed, or if you would have. I. I probably should roll like a sense motive check to see if I would think there'd be any problem but, with letting them know. Oh yeah, because your intelligence is low, isn't it? Or your wisdom? Is well, low? <laughs> no, my wisdom's not low. I'm I'm wise. You no, you, you 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 would know whether or not that like probably like I mean that it would probably benefit missed them not knowing that it was okay. Then Marlo would not explain that. Yeah. Okay. Although I would just say, oh, you don't need to worry about her. She's fine. Okay. Um, they, uh, but he does introduce you. He is being reassigned. Um, but he does introduce you to the two people that are kind of regionally taking over. Um, and that's um, a man by the name of Marcus, kind of a thin, in terms of our world terms, Asian features, very uh, high cheekbones, kind of like Korean, I guess, would be his okay. look. And then uh, his friend, well, actually his wife, uh, Sarah, who's a troll. Okay. And they're just kind of... Because, I mean, the whole... It's, camp was wiped out, right? Right. The, he, he apparently Marcus has always been kind of regionally in charge, but he's just never around. Um, but Marcus and Sarah seem like they're going to be like, like basically, they they've been reassigned to to have m more oversight. Of okay. The area. Um Along with that, during one of the times that Barlow and Miss probably would have hung out at the Copper Coral, Miss probably would have talked about Sayer and asked Marcus asking for Frost's twin yeah. before she made the decision to give it give them. Yeah, uh, they also for study they actually Frost's twin is given to Marcus and Sayer. Oh, so there was two of them. Yeah. Yep. Did, is Frost what was in the egg? Yeah. Yes. There was actually two in the same egg when yeah, it hatched. They're twins. Okay. So the reason I asked has nothing to do with the story. I just wanted to know if we got our other walkie-talkie back. Which I'm assuming we did. If Mark yeah, you would have. Okay. Cool. All right. So when last we left you guys, you were speeding along. I, I realized that I, I actually need... Um, uh, melee to make another wisdom saving throw because you're actually it takes two days to get to get to the foot of the mountain so you, your dreams are getting um, attacked again hold on uh, one go ahead I was gonna do try something for you but you go I first. was uh, wondering because I forgot to add my proficiency bonus in on my last roll uh, do you remember what your roll it was a 13 but the proficiency bonus would have made it a 16 Oh, there it is. Uh, your proficiency bonus? You have a proficiency bonus plus three, so it would have made it a six. Yeah, 16. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that would have actually passed. All right. So you, you had bad dreams, but you were, you were able to kind of will them away. But I All still right. need you to make another one because your dreams are being attacked again. Not that this one really matters. You have your spells. Your spells um, back, so. Okay, I need to look up an enhance ability. <clears throat> it would give them a it it would not help with this. It would give him or her advantage on checks, but like, not but not Well safe. no, it it says advantage on checks. Oh, yep, you're right. <laughs> that, that's actually one of the things I was wanting to look up, and it looks like it's only strength decks or con that I could choose from. So No, you can choose 
you can choose any ability score. It, there, it's, you, Owl's Wisdom is a time-honored ability. Okay, but it still wouldn't help, so I wouldn't cast it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so, so Melee, you've been rocked with bad dreams the last two nights. The first night, you were able to kind of... It really didn't affect you. Um, you really didn't get good sleep this previous this last night um it's not a full dream spell so you're not taking the psychic damage or the exhaustion but um you, you just you wouldn't have gotten any benefits from the long rest all right but are you sleeping inside the cart or up on the bench i'm inside mm -hmm. okay so i definitely didn't see you having fitful dreams i don't know if anybody else might have um See, Rindle, you don't have to sleep. So, yeah. But I was uh, driving. Yeah. I'm driving, so I'm not down inside. Mm -hmm. And I only need four hours, so I don't know if I watch. Cause I, it's not that I stare at people, I just happen to gaze at them occasionally. <laughs> I, I would say... Uh, Can we drive through the night? Yeah, because Rindle is driving. Yeah, yeah, Rindle doesn't need to sleep, so we can like travel nonstop. It's a good time. Well, Marlo would have been sleeping, best you know. invocation ever. FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Did you already grab coffee, Scott? I have not. Okay, I'll grab that for you if you like. Thank you. Plus ten XP. Um. So as you guys, so you guys make it really good time. You're able to come to the foot of the mountains with. I'm not going to have you survival check. Marlo knows exactly where this place is. Um. It's actually pretty easy to spot too. It's on the road, um, you do know that you there is no way you're you're e even with your uh, as amazing as your uh, vehicle is, it's not making it up this mountain because uh, it's not a it, it, it's not like a pass. It's it steps it steps it's carved steps into the uh, cliff face. Uh, Marlo, you would know there is exactly 1,350 steps. And don't step on the 623rd. It's cracked and they won't fix it. <laughs> we you also know that it's really it. narrow and it's pretty steep, honestly. Um, it is... In its own weird way, its own trial to get up there. There would be an elevator, though. Some way to get supplies up. Oh yeah, there is. A, there is up. definitely a supply elevator. Does my wagon fit on that? No carriage. Sorry. Boo. I mean, you could try. <laughs> It's less of a volume thing and more of a weight problem. Um, yeah, somebody up at the top has to pull it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they have a pulley. They'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, is there is a freight elevator, but you'd need somebody up at the top to pull the freight elevator up. Is there actually anywhere any like to secure the carriage or is it just sitting down here in the nature at the bottom of some stairs well observed you you know as the master of the carriage that it, it's your own basically desmine you could make you could lock it with your oh. brain if you wanted to sweet hell yeah auto locks <laughs> Ding. <laughs> got it oh. cool lorindo is far less stressed now about leaving his carriage behind okay he's ready to trek some stairs and I would imagine there's some type of stable down at the foot because I mean, yeah. they're, they would have yeah. farm animals that yeah, they would not pick up those and stuffs. You, I mean, Marlo, you do know that while well, there's 1,350 stairs, it also. Sorry, not that this helps you with your current predicament, but it's also terraced. So, like, it, the stairs stop and then there's just a, a flat terrace for, for crops or whatever, and then it goes that starts ascending again but you do know that it's cold up there um so i, I i'm imagining because it is winter that you guys all got winter clothes i'm not gonna say you didn't but 
Uh, it is cold. It is slick. Climbing this, and it's still, it's three days after the winter solstice. It's not, it's pretty dark, too. Okay, so is it the third of Einsair or the fourth of Einsair? It would be the fourth of Einsair. Okay, thank you. And what are these steps made out of? They're carved into the mountain. They're stone. Awesome. So, so if we can decide to climb this, I can use uh, mold earth, and I can make these a little bit more easier for us to climb. If we're not in a rush, we can take our time so we can get up there safely. Um, da -da 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 -da. where is it? He just wants to wreck the tradition of making people walk up the stairs. <laughs> So, is it terraced onto Mount Elsenhope, or is Mount Elsenhope another mountain? It's terraced on Mount Elsenhope. Okay, so this is Mount Elsenhope. Yeah. Okay. Stone shape. There it is. Um, now, again, Marlo, you know that, like, so there's the temple, and then... There are, like, offshoot buildings, too. Most of the terraces have at least one, like, grain storage, or, like, one storage room, and there's, there's various, not gu not officially guard shacks or anything, but there are checkpoints along the way. The, uh, ostensibly to provide medical care to people that can't make it up the steps. Come on, guys. It'll be okay. It just takes a while. Yeah. I mean, you should see some of the really, really old people who walk these steps, like, all the time. I'll add this note, actually. You do see, like, you see a human probably in his 60s, maybe early 70s, shack up his wagon, take two, grab, like, a uh, one of those sticks with basically buckets on either side of them to carry stuff. He balances it out, throws it over several order, and just starts walking up the thing. Yeah. Mist, is, Mist says, yeah, I'm I'm ready to start walking up this whenever you guys are. Uh, I don't mind either. Like I said, I was going to try to do mold earth, so I'm going to start making slight ramps on the corners of each side and alternating so we have an actual place to actually walk from side to side instead of actually having to go up steps. Plus, I was also thinking to help all the, the old people and the travelers to make it easier for them on their trips. Marlo, you do know that while it, seeing him make it easier for the older folks, they might not get too upset. This is the entire area is considered a holy site to this monk, and him messing around with the structure of it might not be <laughs> seen well. But you can adjust that however you want. Rindle's going to cast the fly spell and fly yeah. as far as he possibly can, if not the entire way. Okay. Um, if, if full moon, you might, you might not want to do that. Um, these steps are really, 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 really old. And they've lasted for a really, really long time. Well, you said yourself that they're in need of repair, and so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to help the community. Um, can I ask you something? Step 623. Tell you what, if you fix six hundred step six hundred and twenty three, they might actually like that. <laughs> but just um, make sure it's actually six hundred and twenty three. Step six hundred and twenty four is is sacred, and it's not really matched anyway. So you got to make sure you count each one. Scott, are these steps stone or earth? They are carved into the mountain. Technically, they are earth. Okay. Like I would have to read mold earth, but I, I would say you can mold earth the mountain. I'm just letting you know. Yep, raising up my sleeves, and if he tells me that, I will say I have no problem adjusting it. For the older men and things those lines that we have already met, I'd like to help them. Okay. Yeah, just, just do Can I do an insight Seriously. check on full moon? What's up? I would like to do an insight check on full moon. Okay. Just to see if this is genuinely that he wants to help people, or if there's an ulterior motive. Oh, that's not good. Uh, it's plus four. So that's 12. Uh, 
Full Moon, do you want to roll a check or what do you want to do on that? Persuasion or deception? Just roll the dice. I don't. Yeah, unfortunately, you know which one I'm rolling if I roll. Uh, okay. Just uh, roll the d20. Just roll. Just roll a d20. Tell me what you get. I know your. He stats. knows your modifiers. Yeah, I know your modifiers. He's hard oh, to read. Okay, hard to read. Mm-hmm. Mist will start walking up the steps. Okay. Which I imagine, if he's doing this to each and every step as we go, he, he, it's going to take him a while. Well, I'm going to do a couple steps at a time. I'm trying to make somewhat of a ramp on the sides so they can alternate from left to right to left to right so they don't actually have to walk up the steps. So, you know, like one to three steps, then three to six steps, six to nine, and so on, just so they have some kind of ramp on the side. So you have the um, steps in the middle. Actually, you would know with how the steps work because they're so steep, that would actually make things worse. If you tried to make a ramp because... It, if you're trying to dissuade him, that's just not going to... I'm just like... <laughs> I mean, it's up to you, but it, it would actually make things worse because it's slick and having a ramp would probably not be a great idea. So then I guess I'll make them deeper steps to make it easier for them so they have more... Yeah, that, 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 would that, that would work. That would work. That would give them more purchase. Okay. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll do that every other step instead of each step so that, like I said, okay. it won't take as long. Okay. Okay. How many steps did you say? 1,350. 1,000 mm. what? 350. And then I count out loud every time. Two. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, we're going to get way ahead of him. Yeah, yeah, Rindle flew, so he's like booking yeah. it. <laughs> What's your fly speed and how? Um... The spell gives uh, 60 feet per round. It can last for up to 10 minutes. I think it was up to 10 minutes. I went and closed it. Are you dashing while doing this? I mean, if. If that's what it takes to ensure I, I get there without having to walk, he will use the increased speed. But no, I, I'm his... calculating it right now. Each gotcha. So the fly... steps aren't the steps aren't exactly a foot each, but I, I'm right. I'm calcul just for my mathematics. I'm calculating sure. them as a foot each. And it's uh yeah, it's concentration up to ten minutes. Uh, fly speed of sixty for the duration. Oh, I cast it as a higher level spell because it's fourth slot. When using it as fourth level or higher, you can target one additional creature. Eh, they can walk. Okay. <laughs> you don't let them know that it's. No, I just kind of like lift up into the air dramatically in my my nice black tux coat that I got in, uh, you know, the city of bronze, flapping in the wind, and I just start floating off of the stairs at a very fast pace. <laughs> so Miss sees this and she looks down at Frost and. She is tempted for a moment to cast Polymorph on Frost and then turn into a bird and actually beat Rendell. Okay, so... But she doesn't do that because she has no idea if she's going to need the spell slot Okay, later. so Rendell, at that speed, just lazily flying up there, you'd make it in there in about two and a half minutes. If you dashed up there, you'd be in there in about a one and a half minutes. Uh, you're muted again. again. Damn it, this button, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, basically, he, he's just kind of, he'll go the normal base speed then, so he looks calm, collected, and just like, you know, kind of arms crossed, floating along, <laughs> passing everyone on the stairs without even looking twice at them. Okay, so as you're ascending, oh. um, one thing I do want you to do is give me a constitution check. Not a saving throw, a constitution check. Pretty sure that's just a zero anyway. Yep. One of the things you kind of realized you didn't realize too heavily when you guys were headed <laughs> south is you were actually still going up in terms of elevation as you were headed towards this mountain. And with the thousand three hundred and fifty feet, you're used to, you know now you're a dwarf, so it's not a huge deal. 
but you're used to being near more coastal waters. The air is getting kind of thin I'm, up here. I'm also a mountain dwarf, if that's any. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you're pretty. Used, you, you haven't been up this high in a while. You're like, ooh, that's there's a familiar burn in your lungs that you're like, I wasn't expecting that. But you get up there pretty easily. Um, how well is everybody else going up? So, Mist, you're walking. Well, I'm unless walking. actually, um, in my giant raven form, am I strong enough to pick up Frost and carry her? Uh. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to use Beast Bond from my ring so I can actually telepathically communicate with her and let her know what I'm about to do. And then I will... Um, Beast Bond only affects beasts, right? You said she was... She's oh, wait. a monstrosity. Oh, that's right. Never mind. Belay my last... Uh, da, 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 da. I would have actually done healing word in there then. Okay, so I'm going to try to do a animal handling check to let to kind of calm her down, let her know I'm about to do something weird. Okay, give me an animal handling <clears throat> check. Oh no, that's a seven. She's totally gonna bite you. <laughs> she um, kind of does want to. And scratch your little head, and then I'll turn into the raven. She actually kind of backs up towards Marlo and Melee. <laughs> I, uh, I'm I'll going scratch to... your head. She kind of leans into it a little bit. Um, okay. Then but... I'm going to attempt to pick her up and fly. Okay. Uh, sure. You, you pick her up and fly. She's not exactly comfortable with this. Mm hmm Okay. I need you to do a constitution check as well, as your giant raven form. As my giant raven form. Okay. Giant raven, giant raven. Okay, constitution <sighs> check. That's only a plus two. All right. That's 18. Okay. So, yeah, you, you have that that frigid feeling in your lungs, but it's, it'll, or that the kind of lack of air, but you're able to um, fly up there with little, with a little effort. Um, so Melee, Marlo, and Full Moon, you're, but you're, you three are still walking up there, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. And, and I will, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so as we're walking, spending if they outpace me, things those lines, I'll talk to the merchant, try to get a little bit more lay of the land, try to get in with him, you know, work, work my magic, talking to him the whole time we're up there to get more information out of him that we might not normally have. Um, the, uh, give me a persuasion check on that. Um, Marlo, what are you doing? Oh, I, Marlo's just going to be nice, and he's going to cast... Um, Bear's Endurance on as a third level spell so that he can cast it both on Melee and Full Moon. Okay. So that's so there's temporary hit points involved with that too. So you... there's temporary hit points and yeah, which I should probably roll, but I was mostly just doing it for the advantage on constitution checks. Okay. Okay. And once Mist gets up to where we're going, she'll Put Frost down, drop Wild Shape, and s scratch Frost and give her some a, a treat and some lubs. Okay, so switch over to Rindle and Mist real quick. They're, they're making their way up there. Uh, not not a D26. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, 2D6. There we go. Um, so, Melee and Full Moon, both of you get seven temporary hit points. Um, Rindle and Mist. As, so, you come up, and this temple is beautiful. Um, there's, there's an ice flow, like, almost bisecting a, a, a land bridge. As two basic turret, uh, turrets come up, um... It, it it looks somewhere between the cross of a of a temple and a uh, and a 
a castle and but you also see a lot of kids running around there seems to be quite a few juveniles um I mean, you know, in Marlow, this also kind of works as an orphanage. Um, as you, you, you find a place to land, it's pretty easy to spot. Uh, green grass, which is, considering the cold, is amazing. They're able to maintain a garden here. But as soon as you do, um, you hear a weird whistling, and then a bunch of people just levy spears at you. It's run out of the thing. The, I was uh, gonna say they just appeared, or they come running towards. They come us running spears. towards you with spears. Uh, most yeah, of you can tell are probably in their teens. They don't. Uh, uh, hi, we mean you no harm. Are you? Why are you? Uh, why are you brandishing spears at us? Rindle's just we gonna do not call appreciate when people cheat the path of wisdom oh oh Rindle's leaning on his cane by the way he's like I'm sorry you 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 don't know who I am I will introduce myself I am Rindle I am the new master of and I'm going to name the temple that I'm apparently now the new master of in his opinion <laughs> and I've, I've come to call on your master to introduce myself formally and, and discuss uh, future plans that we might share um Perhaps you know our good friend, and I'm going to kind of look at um, Miss to see if she knows which name I should probably introduce him as, if he's Marlo or Ezekiel Hornswallow today, because I don't know. <laughs> Ezekiel Hornswallow today. I thought you were Marlo. Okay. No, he's Marlo. Yeah, he's Marlo. Yeah, he's Marlo. Okay. very Marlo today. Cool. Okay, Marlo so our then. Friend, our friend Marlo, uh, who was born here, I'm told, is actually working his way up in the traditional fashion. Uh, we, we're just calmly waiting for him to, you know, catch up. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> I love those. I was, I was one, yeah, one, I couldn't tell if you were you trying to deceive or you are trying to persuade. Uh, the students all kind of look at each other nervously. Um, they don't seem to really buy it, but they're... They don't... They, they seem a little less more wanting to hit you with sharp, pointy objects. Yeah, that's fair, and I'm not making any moves to proceed into their territory. I'm just relaxing at the top of the stairs, waiting for my friends. Like, if there's something to lean on, I'm totally just gonna, like, lean on it and mm -hmm. kick back. Um, out of curiosity, does Frost indicate any magical items on any of these kids? No. Okay, cool. Um, so Mist will say, yeah, we are just escorting Marlo, um, and going to chat with your leaders. We are not actually here for training. Everybody must walk the path of wisdom to be accepted in the temple. Conveniently, I'm not here for acceptance. I've already mastered what I need to master. I'm here to discuss things on that term. I, I, think, I think we're going to have to one of them, the oldest one, uh, looks to one of the the youngest ones and that says, "Go get the Sifu. Maybe he'll know what's going on." Fantastic! Best thing you've said all morning. You're gonna go far in this organization, I can tell. Um, and so you see one just scare off. Okay, so Mist is gonna use Druidcraft to first do a little bit of very light air to kind of make Rendell's cloak flap, and then use it again to for uh, cherry blossoms to kind of fall around him. Cherry blossoms from where? Druidcraft, I can just do it. Okay, so Rendell, there's this burst of air, and then these little pink flowers seemingly from nowhere. Rendell is definitely starting to buy that he really is the master. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just hamming it up. He's got, like, this big smile, like, I told you, fuckers, like, the gods love me. <laughs> he doesn't say that, but that's what his face is. Did you hear, where the fuck did those cherry blossoms come from? I don't know, we don't... Yeah, miss... <laughs> it's winter! Those things won't sprout until spring. What in the world is going on? I think you guys have a word called transcendence that covers this. Someday you'll get there. Keep trying. Maybe try the stairs a couple more times. <laughs> Mist 
probably should have done that when Rendell was initially talking to give to kind of help him with that check, but I didn't think about it until after you, it was already decided. It's just funnier that it happens now, and that he's totally starting to buy his own lies. Like I, I, I love that you did that, but I, I, best, I would like you to make a religion check for me, please. Oh, okay. Thirteen. I, I, you don't know why this thought of cherry blossoms p poked in your head. They don't usually. They don't have much religious iconography in this world, so there's that. Oh no! Oh. Che cherry blossoms popped into my head. Okay. Um. It was the gods. For the people that are actually following the path of wisdom, you make it to the first terrace easy enough. Um. Right now, I mean, again, it's winter, so it, pretty much all the fields are pretty um, barren right now. Uh, you do kind of, you see actually a bunch, a few kids um, in the, like, brown, unaligned robes of, and they're skating across what looks like a really thin layer of ice. Uh I'm pretty near the cl cliff. For Marlo, this is a normal thing at, on this terrace level. For the rest of you, you might melee in full moon. It seems actually a little dangerous to be ice skating this close to a cliff. But yeah, there, is, try not to... there is one monk in uh, purple robes that has a curved sword near their side. They eye you suspiciously, but their attention is more focused, seems more focused on the kids. Marlo bows, mm -hmm. comes up, and then just kind of winks at the guy. Kind of winks? Yeah. We're going up. He nods. Uh, the Sifu will be happy to see you. <laughs> I doubt that. <sighs> you don't know. He, he's, he's gotten softer in his old age. And you good, sir? Your name is? My name is David. Uh, Marlo, you, you, you're mildly aware of David. You, you were never friends. He was probably two years younger than you. Um, okay. But one of the other kids from the orphanage. And they would have grown up. You're a little surprised to see him in purple robes. Uh, he never seemed the weapon type. Oh, I thought the purple robes were the drinkers. No, the blue robes are the drinkers. Purple robes are the kenseis. Okay. This is why your disguises are always failing. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out Marlo's a little colorblind. <laughs> he had some problems. Mm -hmm. So remember, Full Moon is actually colorblind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, um, he he does let you pass, but yeah, you keep going up. Okay. Yeah, well, I was gonna say hopefully get a little bit more information out of the merchant person that's traveling oh, yeah, with us. Oh yeah, for the merchant because you actually rolled pretty high. Um, you do know that so the uh, the temple has in the last few months gotten very. They've always been very weird about their traditions. They've gotten even stodgier about it uh, lately. The uh, From the town below, from the, the town that tends to do most of their merchant stuff, there's rumors that the, uh, the Sifu has um, been absent a lot lately. But that's about all you can get from him. About the temple. If you want to know about the town, you can wax poetically about all the stuff they grow. and Yeah, anything and everything that they can learn, even the little itty-bitty stuff, so we can possibly use it for trading or something on the way out. Okay, he, he lets you know most of their uh, community is, a, is agrarian. Um, they don't really have much in terms of industry. But they, do, they do have a lot of crops. Um, they, also, they also manage most of the... Uh, crops up on the mountain for the monks. They're 
while they're great scholars and compassionate people and good healers, they're crap when it comes to actually growing things. <laughs> if, in fact, you kind of get the sense from the community they view the monks as kind of disconnected from the world and useless. But they have a lot of money, so the town likes them. How are they making money? Marlo, you have no idea if you're over here in this. You... They they just always had money. Three brew beer. Don't lie. <laughs> they do actually do brew beer, but it's not very good beer. <laughs> there Riley is a market for it. Like <laughs> Rindle, you'd actually know there is a market for it for Abbey Ales and like for like for a like, certain connoisseur, it's it's good, but it's the English. sour beer. Yeah, it's... sour beer that's only yes, exactly. And I'm going to be loving that beer. Okay. Okay. While Rendell and Mist are just kind of standing there, mm -hmm. um, looking around, is there any like herbs or plants that would be useful to Mist? Give me a nature check. There's a bunch of cherry blossoms on the ground. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. What Chester said. Okay. <laughs> um, you do oh. notice... So, again, because it's winter, the actual trees that are around here are primarily maple trees. Um, they're not in bloom. They're very much in... Um, okay. Well, since it's maple trees, I'll do druid craft again, but this time make maple leaves just kind of like fall over Rendell and Mist. Well, the monks this time are like that makes more sense, but I'm pretty sure the dru I'm pretty sure that weird creature is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> she she looks slightly offended. It's like I'm I'm not a weird creature. That's my herald you're discussing there. I'd appreciate a little civility I... while we wait for your seafood to discuss important matters. Maybe uh, you need a lesson in humility at the bottom of the stairs. For the uh, people on foot, you're about halfway up now. I, I need that. For, I need a constitution check um, because you've been climbing for a while. This one, there doesn't seem to be too much going on. Um, the uh, there's no kids here. Uh, you can pretty much tell that this particular um, terrace was for root vegetables. Um, there is a uh, person in blue robes this time just downing what looks like that Abbey Ale and kind of making a weird face every time he takes a swig, but uh Barlow, you actually do recognize this woman. Uh she is fairly rotund. Um you know her as Missy. Uh and she would have been about a year older than you. She was known as kind of a bully. But you would have known when she went and took the blue robe. Day to you, miss. I see you're partaking in such a wonderful ale. By chance, would you have enough to share with me and my companions here? She belches at I you. I bet you it's strong. So that means yes or no? <laughs> Come on, Missy, let him try. She shoves a tankard in your hand. Bow my head slightly and take what I can. Okay. It's, it's a sour ale. It's... I mean, to, to full moon, I guess it tastes good. Huh. Um, the uh, Missy kind of looks at Marlo. What are you doing, Matt? Didn't, didn't you run away? <sighs> I didn't run away. I left quickly <laughs> without looking back. I distinctly remember some some running. Well, I mean, it's a mountain, right? Like, <laughs> you go down the mountain, you pick up speed. 
It wasn't like I did it in the middle of the night. I did it at my ceremony. I mean, come on, that's a little bit fallen. Mm, no, seems like really. a, seems cowardly to me. Always been a coward, Marlo. <sighs> yeah, it's so good to be home. Should have should have taken the yellow robes because that's what you are, yellow. Well, that's good to hear. I passed the tanker back. Oh, and let's head back up now. <laughs> she belches at you and does that, like, blow thing at Marlo's face. It, like, wafts the smell. Listen, why don't you go jump in a lake? I'll get a suggestion on her. <laughs> 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 So normally, she actually has a pretty good wheel save. However, she's drunk, so she has disadvantage on this. Ah, it's still good enough. Okay. She's like... Well, I'm assuming, right? That's with disadvantage? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh! With, with 14. 14? Hold on. That might be... What's your charisma score? Uh, my charisma score is 16. Proficiency, 3. So oh, have... no, that makes it a 14. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it's 8 plus 6. So she makes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, she's... <sighs> that, was, that was a weird feeling. She eyes you. And she is actually going to try to punch you on that one. Okay. Again, she's drunk, so it's not. She has disadvantage on the attack. Yeah, she she misses you. As she swings wide. She actually kind of stumbles back into her chair. Hold, hold still. It's not fair. There being two of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I will cast Minor Illusion, just, just myself saying, how about three of us, and I'll just have it come from kind of both sides behind her. Okay, that's you, you see her eyes kind of, uh, and she just, uh, just throws up on the ground. I step back so I don't get on my <laughs> shoes. <laughs> nice to see you, Missy. We're going up. She kind of just waves you past. I'll get my yellow robes like With one finger. She's like, you know, flipping you off, but waving you through at the same time. <sighs> okay, and so I you just, guys are making... I turn to Millie, and I'm just like, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. I can tell. Yeah, such a lovely woman. Are you two engaged? <laughs> I'll be like, oh, no, you're she all yours, woman. I, I'll hook, I'll make the introduction again. I'll, I'll talk you up. But she didn't even talk to me. You were there the whole time. She just ignored me. It was all about you. Bring her some wine. You have to be able to out belch her. I don't know if you can do it. Oh, you know what you have to do. Yes, they're recording. I told you that. They're recording each other. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys make your way up. Rindo and Mist, you were, uh, you actually are greeted. There is a old gentleman. You, you're not entirely sure how old. Uh, white robe. Walks up. Hmm... So, you claim to be the new master of the Drunken Fist, huh? Damn it, that's not the style I wanted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> base, uh, Rindle will actually uh, kind of give him like a surveying look up and down, and he'll kind of do his best imitation at the battles that he's seen people doing. And he'll say, it wasn't intentional, but it seemed the, the, the mantle seems to have landed upon me. 
And here I thought it was going to be the, uh, I heard that it was one of my former students. Yeah, there seems to be some confusion on that, but uh, he doesn't seem to want it, and I, I don't have a good reason to say no, so here we are. <laughs> Basically, I'm responsible for the old guy's death, but they wanted to pick him, but they said you had to kill the old guy. So then a bunch of people tried to kill me, and they failed, so here I am, trying to not get killed and figure out what to do about this dude in the red robe, who we beat fair and square, and then the jackass discorporated and said he was going to have some fucking fun with us, and none of us were having fun. So... Uh, allow me to extrapolate. You claim that you killed the previous master. Accidentally. Accidentally. Yes. You accidentally killed a beloved master of the order. Right. Decided it would be a good idea mm -hmm. to claim as such during its funeral, during their mourning period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Attacked the Grand Master of our entire order. He attacked us. Yeah, he actually attacked first. Twice. So, we're attacked by the Grand Master of an entire order. So, you've decided that it would be a good idea to come to our one of our most sacred te temples, where there is literally 1,350 members of our order here. That number seems to be really important. It keeps coming up, Brendel. Yeah, numbers are like that. <laughs> and you decided to not walk the path of wisdom. Correct. I didn't want to give any false pretenses. I didn't obtain my title in the traditional manner. Therefore, it would seem pretentious of me to presume upon your paths in my attempt to be diplomatic about saying, I'm owning what I did accidentally and trying to make it right, and people just keep trying to kill me. I appreciate your honesty. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. With actually advantage, because there's no way you're going to lie to this guy. So He does appreciate that. Oh, okay. Nice. Natural 20, so... Uh, Toss him a little wink. You interest me. Uh, we haven't had a dwarf be a master of, uh, of one of our orders in quite a long time. Although, the smell of brimstone is upon your soul, which is a little disconcerting. But I guess the last one had the smell of pig on his, so... <laughs> he did, and when I make a deal, I stick to it, for better or worse, and all debts must be paid, which is what I'm trying to do by making things right here. I feel a debt, and I'm trying to pay it. Perhaps, then, we should determine... should put you through the trial, at least make you a member of the Order before we make you a master of the Order. So I suggested that at the last temple, and some guy thought it would be a great idea to punch me out a door. And then he ended up not faring so well when the Grand Master showed up, sadly. Um, if we're going to do that, can we lay some ground rules this time? I don't want to accidentally kill oh, no, someone no, no, and be no, in trouble no, again. No, 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 that was, that's the, that's the path of the brute. We you do not have to follow the path of the brute. You seem like more one who wishes to follow the path of the sage. I like where your head's at. Uh, perhaps we'll adjourn to the library then. Should we wait for your your Marlowe? Because he's slowly remembering how to be humble on his way up the stairs. 
Oh, he has plenty more lessons to learn. He'll join us in the library when he gets here. Sifu, may I ask why Marlo left? If he has not shared that with you, I don't see the reason I should share that with you. I'm going to lean over and say five gold it was a girl. (laughs) (laughs) Miss goes, all right, you're on. Your retainer must stay here. <laughs> um, she's my herald, but very well. Um, missed. I'm going to go off with Sifu here and, uh, I guess, catch up with Marlo. Right, she, she does turn to him and is like, take the herald, I guess, to our <laughs> dining hall. Um, <laughs> might as well feed her. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Miss is going to, once again, before being let off, do the cherry blossoms over Rindle. Because <laughs> he seems to enjoy it so much. Again, the Sifu is like... The Sifu this time just eyes you and was like, seriously, what is with the cherry blossoms? Oh, that's that's me. Um, I I have some slight abilities. It it He really enjoys it for some reason, so, I mean... He gets a kick out of it, so I'll do it every so often. It is a lovely smell. I suppose. So the, he uh, ushers you in. Well, uh, ushers Rindle in. You guys take Rindle and him take one set of staircases. Um, Missed the students are ushering you to the dining hall, which is actually going to be up, and is a massive hall. Okay. Um, Marlo. You come to actually. There's another. There's another terrace, but there's nothing really there. There's not even a guard this time. Uh, as you continue up, you come finally. And I need another Constitution check from you guys, because um, it is a long haul. But you come to the main doors of the of the temple. Remember, Full Moon, you have advantage because you still bear his endurance going. No, it lasts an hour. Okay. So, Marlo, oh, you haven't done this in a while. It's... Your lungs are on fire. I'm going to give you a point of exhaustion for the next five minutes. As you have to catch your right. breath. <clears throat> what about... So where did we end up? Oh, no, that's a 15. Cool. Oh, you're you're at the the doors. You're at the doors of the to the library. To no, to the to the temple. The library is deeper in. Like you'll you know you're pretty aware of how the temple is laid out. So, um, when you if you enter, you would be into the like it'd be a hallway basically, a main hall, and then. Uh, the library would just be on. The, it would be the next large chamber beyond that. But there's okay, a bunch I'm just of having rooms. a hard time picturing. Are we with Mist? I guess is that. No, Mist is actually on the top floor at the galley. It's oh, okay. So she flew to the top. They flew to the top of the temple. Yeah. Okay. And how close is the temple to the peak? Wait, uh, we flew up to the top of the temple. I that's thought the we... only place to land. Oh, okay. Um, that explains things. <laughs> it, it, it definitely explains why they were kind of irritated with us. I thought we were just at the top of the stairs, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, Rindle, you could have had, ended was... up at the top of the stairs, but missed because of your raven form, because of how... It, like, when the, the top of the temple it narrows into basically a canyon, so you wouldn't have been able to get down there. It, nope, makes sense. Thank you for the clarification. Sorry. No, it, it makes total sense why they were leveling spears at us now. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we rolled with it. It worked. Smooth yeah. things over. All right, back to Marlo. Yeah, I. so what I'm asking, because I'm just having a hard... I'm trying to picture it. Mm-hmm. To go... Searching for the bell. Would I break off here or would I need to go through the temple and farther up? You'd probably break off here. 
Because you, you toss it off the top of the, the temple, right? I tossed off the top of the mountain where they do the ceremony. Oh, no, 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 no. You would have to get to the top of the temple because that's probably where it would have landed. Okay. Because, so the so there's another path that leads to the top of the temple from behind, uh, to the top of the mountain that leads from the, that leads from the temple. Okay. So, yeah, we go through the doors. Okay. So, yeah, you end up in the main hall. There's a bunch of it splits off. I mean, it's essentially, it's it's not a church, but it kind of has a church-like feel in the main hall. Uh, but beyond that would be the library, and then there's stairs leading up to basically the quarters. And at the very top would be the galley, where Becca is, or Miss is. And you can actually, you'd probably actually hear the Sifu's voice and Rindle, who are discussing what? what? What's Rindle asking? Well, I mean, he'll probably be more than genuinely curious about this whole Path of the Sage, if that's what's going to be getting him in the doors here. So I'll play talk about that and maybe steering things towards this Grand Master that has tried to kill uh, he and his companions now at least twice, in, in his opinion, um, because that was why they chose to come to this library in the first place. So the Path of the Sage is, is actually most of the monks are illuminaries or historians they they read they're not they're not the martial the martially inclined um so the path of the sage is basically a written text it's a it's a dissertation a doctorate if you will um you are given basically three days of the library to discover hidden knowledge or um to prove your value as a scholar. Sounds up my alley. <laughs> uh, for Marlowe, such a path would have been really boring. But for... <laughs> but yeah, so you can probably hear, and uh, the library you're in is not, it's not the biggest library you've been in. Uh, the the, the it's not even the biggest library in the material plane that you've been in, but it's the books here are very old. Um, they are all most of them are in common or have been translated into common. You can actually see quite a few students um, busily trying to you, you, like copy texts. A lot of them in old languages that don't exist anymore into into common. Um, at least one of them is an illuminary, so they're not just copying, they're also making illuminated text, so it's all drawings and beautiful artwork. Uh, but nice. Marlo, you can, you definitely see the CPU kind of, uh, showing Rindle around the library, you could, because there's... There's no door. It's just a doorway, so you can see some bustling movement in and out from the library. Okay. But While they're doing that, Mist is actually going to try. I I can wait. Sorry. Sorry. No. You can... Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Mist is going to try to talk to some of the students while she's having the food and whatever beverage for her and Frost to find out about the other temples and the other masters and like where they're normally located. The, the beverage you're having is water. Yay, water. <laughs> the food you're having is like gruel. And it's an That's, orphanage. Yeah. Mist um, is perfectly fine with that. So, and, and what was the question you were asking? Uh, she wants to know about the other seven masters, where they're normally located, and a little bit about their temple and history, how they came, how the students themselves came to be here. The with, students, uh, pretty much all the students universally were all don't know. They were all at some Can't. point gifted to the monastery or were taken from orphanages in other, in other cities when they were very, very young. Mm -hmm. um, the, Do I get their names? Of whichever orphan students I'm talking to? 
I don't have a list of names right now. I will get you a list of names later. I do not have a list of 1,350 names. Oh, I, I wasn't thinking I'd get all of their names, just a few. But I can get them later. Yeah. So, but yeah, she's trying to find out about the other masters and where they're normally located. Uh, the other masters, so it, each of the temples have their own like offshoot um, school in the major cities. Uh, the next closest and the only other temple besides the Drunken Fist is the uh, temple of the um, sorry, of the Crimson Edge or sorry, not Crimson um, of the Vermilion Edge um, and it's towards the southern end of the uh, continent and it is um, it, near the Hobgoblin Empire of Roku. Empire Roku. Okay. Um, the... I'm sorry, that's not the only one, uh, other one. There's also the Shadow Temple. Uh, no one's quite sure where that is. That's a closely guarded secret. But hobgoblins tend to be the masters of that style as well. So they think it's somewhere in Roku as well, but no one seems to know. Um, the There is two temples on Akira. Um, the, where the Sifu is from, the Temple of the Eternal Sun is... Um, near the northern edge of Akira and then um, the uh, <clears throat> temple of the uh, of the sorry uh, the temple of the rotting bone is near the is internal of Akira in one of the ziggurats. The uh, the last three temples are all in. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, are all near Ravenna in the center continent. In fact, they're all in that city of Ravenna in the center continent. And okay, center continent. Well, in Ravenna. Okay, it looks like Terry wanted to do something. Yeah. So yeah. So depending on what's actually going on, and how much distracted different people are, as well as uh, the path that we transit. I'm not sure if we got rid of the merchant person or if he was following us with us to try to tra to travel or to do his. Is good transfer. If he didn't follow us, I'd bo try to bug him on the way up, since I helped him so much. Ask him uh, for some seeds and also to get him to sign my book, things along those lines. Um, and if he's following us with us along those lines, I'd like to walk past the place where they're actually uh, uh, copying the manuscripts, whether they're books or things along those lines, and ask somebody if I can read one of them while I'm reading, and then just walk around and try to corrupt it and then have them copy it once it's done. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, uh, yeah, okay, I, um, you don't really know how you're going to corrupt it, um, but how are you planning on corrupting it? I'm just going to ask if I can read it, and then I'm just going to talk to them and talk to somebody and say, ask for a place of prayer, because I'm so inspired after reading such texts, I need to convey with my God, because of all of our blessings seem to be walking in line, and then ask for a place to meditate. And then okay. I would try to talk to my god and go there. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but yeah, yeah, they they very much allow you to look at the the book. Um, they do ask you don't actually depart the library with any of the books. Um, yeah, I have no problem walking around, and I have no problem walking away. That way, because I'm saying I'm so inspired, I can leave it there and I can come back. That way, I can figure out how I'm supposed to corrupt it, and then come back to read it to corrupt it. Okay.
You're muted, Scott. Yep. Scott? Scott? <laughs> Scotty? <laughs> We should let him finish. That'd have been better. <laughs> oh, he pulled his mic out. Yeah, all of us can just like sit nice. here and nod and smile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the whole time and be like, "Oh yeah." So uh, we didn't hear you. So can you start over? <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Okay, so the book you get seems to be a dissertation on the repeated effects of peeling potion use and its addictive qualities. Uh, but you can corrupt it however you want, if you want to. Yeah, so basically it's only ones of corrupting it in those lines because I want to make it somewhat easier or seem that it's easier so that anyone reading the book would try it more often, as well as I would uh, dumb down the the um, side effects or things that make it seems less uh, addictive, so people try it more often, and then they get more addicted to it along those lines. Just changing a little bit of things here and there, okay. but that way, when they copy it, they're going to keep copying because it's so useful, and people more and more people are going to come get it, and so it's going to get copied more and more. Okay, so yeah, you you definitely uh, it, you start you you really reform this and take out of context this doctor's dissertation, um, and uh, cool. <laughs> uh, by the way, I because I because I, I actually should have started with this, but I was kind of flustered. Um, who all read the book you got from the last area? The um, the weird history of the uh, there was a book that talked about what the master was. The last game session. Who all read? Uh that? Rendell and Mist would have been reading over that during the journey. Okay. I forgot to remind you about that. Sorry. Did I get muted You're again? You're muted again. Chester's muted again. No, yes, okay. I'm muted again. <laughs> okay. I forgot about that book, but Rendell would definitely have been interested in that had he not forgotten about that book. I don't okay. imagine he would have. <laughs> so one of the things is is is. So it tells the story, as I said, it's told that book in particular told the story of Aurelia, the woman who would eventually become the Raven Queen and her seven generals. Uh, for those of you religious check and Rindle, you don't have to make this check, and Melee, if she read it, wouldn't have to make this check because you're well versed in this. Okay, Mist would ask Melee about it, so. There All is. Right. Uh, Aurelia never had a general. She was not. A, she was not a soldier she was essentially an adventurer there's no generals involved there's no armies involved um so the master's claim to be this heroic general is most likely bs uh of the seven generals there uh the ones the the one that looks amazingly and is identified actually in the book as char uh, there's another one named uh, identified as Damon, and another one identified as uh, Vasilia. Um, they were considered fallen by the other four generals. They betrayed the Raven Queen and tried to usurp her power. Uh, Shar getting the closest to it, uh, being able to. Uh, break free from the mortal coil uh, and exist in a state between godhood and death uh, because she so angered the Raven Queen. Uh, Damon is considered a skeletal figure that goes around and is a psychopath that destroys uh, people that uh, he feels are too close to uh <clears throat> too close to divinity basically uh and looks and the depiction of him in his current form is it looks a lot like what the master looked like when you guys started using blight which explains why the monks were so terrified um 
the other three besides the master of the uncorrupted one that was a uh pretty tan skinned like 12 year old uh by the name of <laughs> uh king king, king telfi sorry i'm trying to remember this off of my head uh king telfi um there is also the uh uh craven lord who's never actually named but was a was redeemed from his monstrous ways by aurelia's guiding light and then the uh The last one is never is doesn't even have a title, uh, and is always kind of depicted as this sh shining light creature. So but, we've got Damon, the skeletal psychopath, Shar, the almost god, Veselia, the other fallen with nothing. Veselia and... has uh, Veselia is the one that looked a, me a lot like Amelia, um, and she is the first vampire. Okay. And then on the, the not follow ones, you gave us King Telfi, Craven, and a Shining Light. So and the Master. There's seven. Oh, the I thought you said Damon looked like the Master. Damon looked were. like the Master when he was blighted, but the Master when he wasn't blighted in his like full form. Gotcha. <laughs> and at the hot and the most pure of the of the good ones, according to this book, is the Master. And, yeah, it, that's BS. You get the feeling that this is more propaganda than it is anything else. Just as Rindle, as you, the way it reads, it's it's a self biography. Kind of. <laughs> it's his diary. How cute. <laughs> it also looks like. The master is trying to pin, like, what he actually is on Damon, and Mist would bring that up with Mealy and Rendell to discuss it. Oh wait, did I lose everybody? No. Nope. No. Okay. I got you. But that's cool. what you got from that book. It, here, Rendell, if, if if there's anything specific you want to look for, you can. Um, there, it the uh, Sifu does kind of direct you to a. Uh, uh, to a woman in, in brown robes, kind of mousy looking. Oh, this is this is V. She will, um, she can get direct you to any of the books in here. She's probably more versed in this library than I am. And Mist has the book right now that we read on the way here, right? Yeah, correct. Cool. I will probably have brought that book up to see if uh, he'd be interested in seeing it and that we're looking for anything that is more accurate than the clearly biased version of uh, the Masters. So as past. you present, it's like, oh, all of us have, have read such a book. And when you say biased, he looks at you very darkly. Hardly? Like darkly. Angrily. Oh, darkly. He, he does not buy that it's biased. Yeah. Got it. Very well. I, I'll kind of diffuse that with, well, we know that all authors, whether they intend to or not, color their writings in bias. Because, you know, when I write about myself, obviously I shit rose petals and... Uh, <laughs> Perhaps your dissertation should be your perspective on the matter. Exactly. So, I, you know, I've got curious about if there was any other perspectives on the master than the one presented in this book. Oh, the master, no. He is a... <sighs> He tries to stay out of the 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 the, um, the light of of fame. He is a humble creature. Uh, the one thing, but we do have quite a few books on Aurelia's divinity, or uh, perhaps you would like. And he actually brings out a book. But I have a book on Char. Uh, I have a book on Damon's many crimes. I'd like to look at the one on Damon's many crimes. He sounds like a pretty entertaining character. Okay, well, it's going to take you a while to read that book. Um, Marlo, what do you want to do? You've been fairly quiet. Okay, so where are we? 
You're in the main hall, but you you you've seen Rindle and the Sifu talking. They're they're just okay. And so the, the Sifu you did you did notice the Sifu notice that you're there. He seems to be patently trying to ignore you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he likes no. Rindle better. I get it. <laughs> I'm going. I know you said don't come back. With... Got it. And he's going to keep on going uh-huh. up towards the top. Okay. Um, he is looking for mist. Okay, you, 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 as you make your way up towards the top, because of where the galley is and where the stairs are, you spot her. She's sitting down eating that gruel that you spent so many years getting tired of. You know, you don't have to eat that. Oh, thank God. I thought I was going to be... It would yeah, be no, it's not like the steps. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll get up and it's go to It's winter, and they can't grow anything right now, so that's what they got. Ah, okay. Actually, you know what? If you did kind of your stuff, you might be pretty grateful. I mean, you might actually have something to offer these people. Okay. Um, is there an area that I can, like, get some stuff growing for them? Oh, probably. You just but, came um, from that I... area. <laughs> Missed. Just let's... You mean down below? Yeah, where you or landed. Oh, up top then. Okay. But, um, but right now I need your help with something else. Okay. What do you need help with? Okay. So here's here's the thing. When I left, it was kind of during a big deal. It was kind of like my commencement ceremony into my class and I decided I didn't want to do it because there was a lot of things going on. Look, that's not important. What is important is we have these little handbells and they're they're made for us. Well, we actually kind of partially craft them ourselves. They're sacred. Um, mine's, I, well, I don't know. It's, and he, he's going to point up the mountain to like a grove of trees, probably in there somewhere. I know you're gonna finding things. Okay, oh, I, I can give um, it. A if shot. I don't come it back, the the, the seafood, I'm, I'm sure you talked to him already. He isn't gonna talk to me. Okay. Uh, well, let's start walking up there. I'll see what I can do. Is that hopefully? It's pretty high. It's pretty cold. I threw it in summer. It's probably like buried in the snow. It's been like a lot of years. Like, I mean, um, out of curiosity, would Marlo have brought this up during the trip? It's important that um, he, she might, he might need her to find something. Oh, uh, you mentioned it to me, so I would say, yeah, you would have. Yeah. Okay, then I would have locate object prepped. Right. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, so as we walk up, I'll. Uh, it's like, yeah. Once we get closer, I'll I'll cast my spell and see what I can find. Cool. Um, since there isn't like a path there. I mean, there are steps that go up to the top where I mm-hmm. threw it. Okay. <laughs> but this is kind of like off the side of the cliff, uh, so we might have to hike a little bit too. That that's all right. This will give me a chance to bring something up that. Um, well, I didn't want some of the our other party members to over here. So this is actually a pretty good chance. Uh, you know Co- Father Coral, the priest from the my temple? Um, you, you probably heard me talking about him before. If not, well, Father Coral is kind of like the head priest now at the Dreamer's Temple. He, oh, okay. Like he came all the way up for you. That's yeah, awesome. He, He contacted me after our interaction with the master, and um, he said whatever I did helped. So I I haven't had a chance to tell you this either, but apparently the dreamer's been stirring, and the Cicalias are really worried about it, because once... Well, yeah, because that's a bad thing. We don't want him to wake up, right? Well, there's a high chance that, you know, there'd be a lot of um, damage along the coast as he starts moving around, because or it starts moving around because it's really big. But uh, it is awakening. It seems to be awakening much calmer than they were expecting. However, whatever I did, probably with the crystal thing, helped slow it down. So it's 
giving the Cicalias some time to figure things out. Um, you mean when we well, made the body disappear? Yeah, with, when I used my claws on the crystal, I mean, you, you didn't see me because I was invisible at the time, but when I shattered it, apparently whatever I did is helping slow the dreamer's awakening. And so it's buying them some time. Um, and Father Coral asked that if I could keep doing that to help keep the dreamer a little bit more calm as they work things he out. He did not that say it, that. He said that, he just said, just keep doing what you're doing because it seems to be helping. Okay. Well, Mist is wise enough to kind of correlate the two, though. Okay. okay. Oh, just, okay, but... I mean, we're thinking that those are in the other masters, right? Yeah, that's why I, I mean, wanted... mean, they're, they're actually living. <laughs> yeah, that's why I wanted to talk about it as uh, with just you, because um, I don't know what we're going to find out, but... So, yeah, the, the dreamer's slowly awakening, and what we did helped a little bit. Well, we're, I mean, we're in the right place. It's a big library, right? I mean, that's why we came here. Okay. But but the seafood owes a lot too, and he's he's not going to be really helpful until we do this. All right. Well, we're almost there to the top, right? Hey, you're almost to the grove. I'm assuming you're walking and talking, so it's not like. Mm -hmm. So you want to cast locate object? Yep, I want to cast locate object, okay. and then. So how does that work? Like, so do I just have to draw it out, or how do I explain to you what we're looking for? You just give it a a description of the bell. Um, mm -hmm. And she will try to concentrate on the spell. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's just it's, it's a brass bell. It's it's silvered around it. It's like a like a handbell, like you'd see in a church program. You know, ding, ding, ding. Okay. Um, and you it's threw it off one side. It's got a symbol of the sun on the other. Okay, and then it'll you... point up to the top, of, the very top of the the cliff, where there's like a monolith kind of. Mm -hmm. I threw it off from over there. I mean. I think it landed in these trees somewhere. It was pretty high up, but... Okay, I'll start walking around, seeing if, with the concentrating on the spell, if I could get... doesn't take this. long. In fact, uh, what's your guys' passive perceptions? I think mine's 17. Yeah, 17. So, in fact, you didn't even have to cast Locate Objects. As soon as um, Marlo says the, the monolith... Oh, okay. You see nope. a little outcropping, and... There's, and you see a bell, a handbell, hanging from it. From Marlowe's description, there's no way he threw it on the monolith. And as soon as you off point that... Off the monolith. What? Yeah. Off the monolith. Yeah, you threw yeah. it off the monolith, but it's actually hanging on the back side of the monolith right now. Um, you can tell that somebody put it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> huh. Well, let's, let's go get it. Oh, crap. <laughs> what? What's wrong? Well, so if, like, someone actually wanted this and took it, they'd just take it, right? I think my master came back and found it. Now, he could just be being nice, trying to help me out if I brought it back. But there's not a lot of lessons in that. Okay. Wait here. You are you sure? And uh, yeah. And if I like, depending on what happens to me, you might want to jump in. But I don't want you right next to me when I grab this. Okay. I'll um. I'll stay about ten feet back or so. I might want to make it like thirty or forty. All right. I'll stay about thirty feet back. And climb up behind you. <laughs> and he will very hesitantly walk over and how, how where is it, how high is it hanging? It's it, if you walked over, you have to climb about twenty feet to get to it. And it's hanging off the side, yeah, of the rocks, kind of, or is it like in the tree? Off the side of the rocks, like it's like pulverized, like it's it's dug in there. Oh, like yeah. Okay. That's what I said. So, like, yeah, you can it's... obviously tell it's not, it, there's no way. There's no way that this was natural. Yeah. 
So he looks around, tries to make a perception check to see what's going to happen to him. Okay, you make. I'll actually let you roll for this, because you're actively trying to look for something. I'm looking for traps. Uh huh. Okay. So while you don't see any traps, you do notice. So you're you've always heard rumors of this giant eagle that protects the the cliff. No one's ever actually seen it, but you actually see a sleeping giant eagle uh, about two hundred feet from from you. It's in a nest. Um, it it seems to be it, it seems to be asleep. Okay. Okay, so Mist is going to be looking at the eagle and trying to determine whether at some point she can turn into that, by the way. Okay. You know, doing what a druid has to do to get more wild shapes. Okay. Okay, so it's 20 feet up, right? Yeah. So I'm going to cast Silence. Not as a ritual, I'm just going to cast it because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. Right. Um, on the wall to try to catch the area around the wall in 20 feet. So basically, like, I'm putting my, my the middle of my radius 10 feet up. Okay. I, I got you. And then I'm going to try to climb up there and grab it. Okay, give me a, a athletics or acrobatics check, whatever's higher, to get, get up there. Okay, so it's it, it's a struggle to get up there, but it, I mean it's it's not that it's it's a pretty craggy rock thing, so it's not like it's yeah. it's hard. Um, you, so you get up there, it takes you a bit, but um, once you get up there, I need you to uh, you're gonna remove it. I take it. Yeah. Okay, so I need you to make a strength check for me because it's it's dug into the wall. Just a straight strength check. And an athletics check if you have athletics. Okay. Yeah. Athletics is better. Okay. Yeah, no problem. And with the silence spell, you you it's a weird feeling because there's no sound. But you get mm -hmm. the feeling there was some enchantment on this bell to make it way louder than it would have been. But because of the silence spell, you like there's there's like a a vibration in your stomach that happens. Okay. But I I reach in and I yank the clacker out of the bell. Okay. I just remove it. Okay. Um, and then you just come back down. Um, yeah. Actually, hey, hey, miss. I, I come back for a little quiet. Hey, miss. Do we got anything that, like, you know, makes sound? Like that we can leave. Uh, that that we can leave. I yeah. mean, sure. I've got some string, and we can put some coins on it. Could possibly make a lot of sound. We don't have like anything like fireworks or anything, do we? Uh, I've got my gun. I got my. Ow. Never mind. It's not a big deal. Okay. Let's go back. We got the bell. Okay. As you head back, you see a very familiar old gentleman walking up to you. White Rose. So, Marlo, you have returned. Yes. Yes. Sifu. I've returned. Well, I mean, I have not returned. I, I'm not going to put you all through that. <laughs> but we need your help. And maybe we can help you. Are my Still friends using tricks in the library? to skirt your lesson? Yeah, quite. They are in the library. One is doing interesting things with knowledge, as far as I can tell. 
Um, the other is questioning our beliefs. Still skirting your lessons with your little tricks, I see. My tricks are not so little anymore. I had to take a little bit of offense with that. <laughs> Besides, I've seen you. You've got some tricks of your own, old man. I was hoping one day you'd follow my path. Well, you always had the gift, Marlo. If you would only... If it wasn't for the other hanging-ons on your path. I mean, look, I wanted to be like you. But you wanted to shut me up and put me in a cage. Look, is there any... And then Marlo looks around. Are... Is anyone else from the, like, are any of the other monks looking at them? No, because they... you're, you're still, like, as far as you know, you can tell you're alone. And then he looks around. Look, I don't want to embarrass you, but I, I got to. And then he's going to try to hug you. To see okay. He, he, he tenses up. He's, he was not expecting that. And on that, we will actually end for the day. Uh, thank you for playing. Um, Aww. Thanks, boss. I had plans. What was your plans? <laughs> we'll go back to full moon real quick. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, so we got basically, 20 minutes. We started late, right? Yeah, so basically when we were, they were talking, I noticed people getting more and more distracted. I was going to be walking around, talking to different monks about how their uh, little belief is, as well as figure out who I need to stay away from that don't have strong belief, and then I'm going to try to spend time corrupting them slash doing other stuff. Oh, okay. So... Um... The people with the least strong belief are going to be the children. Yeah, well, we can do it later. I just want to make sure. <laughs> no, 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 no. So what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> the newer they are to the temple, the less strong, the less indoctrinated they are. So the 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 people with the least amount of belief would be the 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 kids and the teenagers. Yeah. So like the teenagers that are questioning their beliefs between like thirteen and sixteen, and then well, the very yeah. young kids. Yeah, well, that and also is going to say the people that we want to stay away from that have strayed from the temple, you know, things that, you know, that they're on their last legs so that I don't get influenced them while I'm here, too. I don't want to lose out on the experience. Does anyone that I can pretty much corrupt, but I'm going to try. Oh, oh they, they do let you know that the, we, the ones in incentivized training down in the catacombs. Awesome. Okay, that's all I really want to do so I can corrupt people. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yep. you, everybody. See y'all. See ya. All right. Thanks, Scott. It was fun.